Do you know what time it is? It's time for another Lucia Capital Group weekly video. I'm Rick Plum. Did you ever get a notice in the mail from the IRS? It's no fun, is it? Even if you're sure you've done nothing wrong, getting that letter just seems to trigger an anxiety attack. Much of the time, they just want you to clarify a few things or let you know you owe just a little bit more or maybe a little less in taxes. But sometimes they want to do an actual examination of your accounts and financial information to ensure what you reported is correct. That is according to the tax laws. In other words, it's an audit. Overall, your chances of being audited by the IRS are pretty low. CNBC says that in fiscal year 2019, fewer than one half of 1% of individual returns were audited, which is fewer than half of those audited in fiscal year 2010. There are many things that might trigger an IRS audit. Sometimes all tax returns go through the IRS computers and algorithms that compare your tax return against what they call norms for returns that are similar to yours. If your return looks statistically different, they'll probably take a look at it. These algorithms are programmed for each tax season. In addition, some are just pulled out at random just to see what's up. Here are some situations outside of the computer review that could trigger an audit. If you have a business partner or fellow investor in a business that you are involved in and they get audited, the IRS may look at you as a candidate. If you're self-employed and your business reports nothing but losses over a period of several years, that may raise a red flag. If you're in a high income bracket, you're more likely to see an audit. Now, generally those with incomes of around 10 million or more tend to be looked at more carefully, but not always. If you file late or you don't file a return at all, that may trigger an audit, especially if you file regularly for many years or if the IRS has received 1099s or W-2s or other information that showed you having income for that year. If you claim excessive deductions compared to others with similar income and circumstances, they'll probably want to see some proof that they're legitimate. These can be things like excessive mortgage deductions and unsubstantiated repair costs or higher than normal charitable contributions that go against those norms that I mentioned earlier. And of course, if you don't report all of your income, it's almost a sure bet that you'll at least get a notice questioning why it's not on your return, if not an outright audit. So it's important to always make sure you report all of your income, especially investment income, which can sometimes be easily overlooked if you're not paying attention. Things like capital gains, dividends, interest, stock-based compensation, or independent contractor work. All of these are reported on the, to the IRS via a 1099 form, which you should also receive. If the IRS has an unaccounted for 1099, you're almost guaranteed to hear from them. Keep in mind though, that being selected for an audit or being asked to furnish further information doesn't always suggest there's a problem. If you've kept good records and you feel you've done nothing wrong, then you're probably okay. The best route though, is the one that avoids an audit or correspondence in the first place. In next week's video, I'll talk about some of the best ways to avoid an IRS audit and how you might be able to deal with one if that scary notice arrives in the mailbox. Until then, happy filing.